Not too long ago, I went on a backpacking trip with my Boy Scout troop to Jacks River Falls up in North Georgia. And this video, we're going to take a look at the uh, backpacking trip, kind of give you some trip footage where you're crossing the rivers multiple times and all that. And I'm going to get a quick kind of recap of the gear that I used and, and took with me on the backpacking trip. What worked out, what didn't work out, and how well the trip went in general. Hopefully this will be an interesting video for you. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. So, as I said, uh, I went for actually for the second time on a backpacking trip to Jacks River Falls up in North Georgia. And the first time we started, we started upstream and hiked downstream about nine miles or so, set up camp and then hiked back out the next morning in the dark, by the way, which was really cool because somebody had to make a flight. That trip included like 20 something river crossings. This time we started downstream about nine miles away and made another 20 something river crossings, hiking upstream to the falls, set up camp, and then we hiked back out about four miles to a different parking lot um, uphill the entire way to a place called Beach Bottom. So anyway, that being said, I thought I'd do in this video is just kind of go over the gear that I took with me and explain my rationale behind it, tell you what worked really well, what, what maybe didn't work so good, and hopefully that'll help you if you decide to go backpacking sometime soon. Before we do that, I'd like to take a minute to thank one of the channel sponsors, Sportsman's Guide, for being a sponsor of the channel. I've been a customer of Sportsman's Guide for a number of years now. I bought a lot of different stuff from them, from military surplus to ammunition to camping gear, and they really are a one-stop shop for everything pertaining to camping survival and general preparedness. They've got everything from military surplus to camping gear to firearm stuff, just you name it, they've got it. Great prices and they're great folks to work with. And they're also officially a channel sponsor for Survival on Purpose, so a thumbs up to them for that also. So anyway, there's that. Let's talk about the uh, the backpacking trips. So this is actually one of my favorite backpacking trips I've ever been on. Again, I've done it twice. The Jacks River Falls is a great area in North Georgia. The closest parking spot is about four miles away. Um, it's beach bottom. There's no camping allowed right at the falls. You got to go up, up or downstream a pretty good little ways because they, they're just trying to keep the falls area as pristine as possible. So anyway, since this backpacking trip was um, included like 20 something river crossings, the deepest one for me at least was probably up around the old crotch area. And when you hit that certain level, you know you're, you, there's, there's just something about that cold water when it gets to a certain point that gets your attention, right? And so I tried to prepare for that. I didn't wear my regular boots. I wore some tennis shoes and old tennis shoes and I did have my heal that pain inserts in them uh, which I'm actually got in these shoes now because the last time I went to the falls is kind of when my whole episode with plantar fasciitis I just kind of started so I got these heal that pain shoe inserts and I wore them and they were really great I had no no plantar fasciitis issues no issues the only issue I had with my feet was I came really close to spraining my right ankle and I, one of those deals where you kind of you uh you, you step wrong on something and I wasn't even in the river uh, that was because I was really careful in the river because it was real slippery and I didn't want to take a take a bath right but one of those deals where you kind of you hit your ankles twist a little bit and it's like almost there you're almost like oh man that really hurt but it wasn't quite enough to, to, to like okay it's, it's bad bad now but it's been a week now since I'm as I'm making this video and it is still really bad so still hurting a little bit but I think um, that's just kind of a function of having really no support shoes and not paying attention stepping on something loose so so there's that so let's talk about the uh, gear that I use so first of all if you're gonna go backpacking you gotta have a backpack and once again I used the uh, outdoor vitals Rhyolite 65 this is about a four four and a half pound backpack um really really bomb proof rock solid backpack this thing's been my backpacking um pack for two or three years now since since um the outdoor folks at outdoor vitals sent it to me i've just been on a lot of boy scout campouts. it is bomb proof still going rock solid um very very comfortable very supportive got these little pockets here on the on the belt i like it's got the pull forward waist strap and, and there's a video on that you can check check the channel out. i'll probably put links to all these videos about these individual items if i have them in the description below there'll also be links in the description below for a lot of the stuff where you can buy it and many of those links will benefit the channel if you choose to uh, to do it um but either way 
I just want to kind of show you what, what works and what doesn't work. The, uh, the only negative I would say about this pack, if it is a negative, and to some people it may not be, to, it was kind of ballpark to me, there's not a lot of, of individual pockets. There's a few, there's two on the, on the top cap, and maybe this one zipper and a couple little stashes in there. There were a couple things I probably could have, I would have liked to have a couple of more individual pockets for to keep stuff segregated. That's just my personal. Um, other than that, it, it's absolutely a rock solid backpack, and it has a a rain cover built in, which I took advantage of because it seems like every time we go backpacking, it rains. So anyway, that's the Outdoor Vitals. It's a very very good pack that does a really good job. The next piece of gear that I took is a shelter. You got to have a good shelter, right? I personally have for the last several years been using exclusively a Hennessy hammock. Um, my original one was stolen. Hennessy was kind enough to send me one of their Jungle Explorer uh, zips. I'm using that one now. I really like it. I like it better than the original one. It's about four, four and a half pounds, but it is a self-contained, really nice, comfortable unit. It poured down rain on, on us Saturday night in the middle of the night. I mean, like sounded like a machine gun on the tarp. Here's a pitter patter of the rain on my Hennessy hammock. And it's a uh, very, very soothing sound. And I stayed completely dry, completely comfy, and thankfully it quit raining about time to pack up camp Sunday morning, so that was cool too. So anyway, so the Hennessy hammock is my preferred method of shelter. Along with the shelter, you gotta have some kind of cover. and. Um, I, I decided to try out, this is the second time I've used this, since it was going to be raining, I didn't want to bring my down bags. So I, I've got this um, sleeping bag here from the folks, it came in a battle box, um, actually, and it's a battle box branded sleeping bag, and it's a front zip bag, synthetic, it says it's a five degree bag, um, so I didn't really snuggle up in it, but it did get kind of chilly at night, a hammock typically is going to drop your comfort level many many degrees because you got all that convection air underneath you uh, this thing was perfect pretty lightweight and packs up really small and just did a great job it got kind of damp and wet but it's dried out really quickly and um you can still see a little bit of water here it's, oh my gosh the dogs next door are going crazy it's been um so it's been hanging up for a couple days every time i think i'm going to get it down it starts raining again but it's pretty dry now so that's the uh, battle box sleeping bag worked really well um <laughs> i think it's available on the battle box website wow the uh, next item I took, I don't know what's up with those dogs, is um, another thing I think is essential for camping comfort is a good pillow. I have tried a lot of different pillows. The one that I really like the best of any pillow I've ever used, and this is my go-to pillow, is the uh, Thermarest Compressible Camp Pillow. And it's got like these little foam, chunks of foam in it that are, are really, really good. And you just wash, I just washed this thing and dried it when I got back and it fluff, fluffed up really well. So, you know, you wash it every now and then, throw it in the dryer, really easy to maintain. And it doesn't compress up to as small as many pillows. It's about the size of a football maybe, but it is super comfortable. I really like it. I think this is the medium size. They have several different sizes, but, uh, and I think the patterns are, this is an old pattern, but it's a really, really good pillow. I highly, highly recommend that one. So that's my shelter and sleep system and all that, my pack shelter. So that's like the big three, right? Your backpack, your uh, shelter, and your sleeping bag. I'm gonna say I was at around the 15, 14, 15 pounds on all that. Um, my pack was around 35 pounds. I didn't weigh it, but that's about where we're at. So um, the other thing that I brought that I took advantage of, used, was this um, Frog Togs rain jacket. Now, instead of a poncho, I used a rain jacket because it's just a little more convenient for me. My pack already has a rain cover on it, so use a rain jacket, and it uh, works very well. This thing, this Frog Togs, is very lightweight, weighs nothing, and it breathes, which is really cool. Highly recommend the Frog Togs. So, um, let's see, what else? As far as the uh, clothing or whatever, so, of course, my uh, Tilly Airflow hat. It, it is absolutely rock and roll cool. This thing is like four years old. It rained a lot sheds of water keeps my glasses from getting all wet um, it's just very very comfortable very lightweight this thing floats if it falls in the water but i really like it because it uh, it, it sheds the water and um i got it all jacked up on my head now sheds the water and just keeps the sun off of your head also i have a brand new item here to show you that this is not even out yet so this is kind of like a a, a pre a pre-production or advanced prototype model but i think it's going to go to market real soon um, from the folks at click belt it is a click belt single ply with a poly poly version of a buckle and that is really really cool it's a um 
lightweight, non-metallic. So I, I decided to wear this for backpacking because A, it's lightweight and it's just a little more comfortable and single ply because I wasn't carrying a pistol on my belt. There was one in my backpack. And that is, uh, I think that wraps up the clothing. I was wearing wool socks, of course, and these very shorts I'm wearing right here. And one thing I'll tell you, if you go to Jack's River, there is a lot, 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 lot, lot of poison ivy. Ask me how I know. So, um, there's that. So that brings us to the next major component of, of having the of, of backpacking, and that's you got to have some water, right? So the first thing I did, I just had a regular Nalgene bottle. You've seen those, but I also had this Hydro Blue filter bottle. However, when I got the thing out to use it, I'm just going to show you this because I'm going to be, you know, Hydro Blue. I think they're good stuff. They sponsored a video for me, and it's all good. But this thing has got like a little filter that sticks in the bottle, right? But it, and it's a hollow fiber filter. If you can see that, let's see if you can look inside there. Focus, guys. You see those fibers in there? They're like broken and stuff. I don't know if it, I don't know if it dry rotted or if it froze or what. But um, I didn't trust this. I didn't use it, so I just used it as a water bottle. So I still like it because it's got this thing. You can squeeze the water from it. You can squeeze it and get a little pressure. Use it to kind of wash, wash off stuff if I needed to. So there's that. But I also used the hydro blue 10 liter go bag which was excellent we can fill this thing up from the river hang it up in camp and everybody could fill up their water bottles and get, get fresh clean water for um cooking and or drinking i noticed one of the other guys had my old go-to a sawyer mini filter and this bag on the sawyer mini if you notice he had this big bag but it's like this big right so you got to scoop it in the water and try to fill it up scoop it in the water and fill it up it just took for, it takes forever to fill this bag up that 10 liter bag you open that sucker up boom, scoop it up you got a bunch of water at one time boom, scoop it up boom, scoop it up boom, 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 scoop it up a bunch of water has that for grammar and, and it just works so it was really great that one worked out really really well um, and, and it was a big help to everybody in camp along with the water we got to have some food right so i carried now this is the breakfast skill i didn't eat but we did eat the chicken teriyaki but it had some mountain house and got to have a, a stove of some kind to cook that food right so for the stove i used this old um this kind of combo hose stove so because i like it a little better than the, than the small one it's got a little bigger bigger um place to put pots and pans on pots on it or whatever and i just uh did that hook you hook this to a bottle it's got a little little peso igniter on it lights it up easy easy it's all get out to use and just folds up about this big and it's kind of it's got its own little bag and everything so and i like it because it fits right in the old pathfinder uh, stainless steel cup which is what i used like that so you put it right in there a couple of sports that's my cookery stuff and that that's, takes care of all the major items the major like the major categories everything else is kind of a purchase you got flashlights emergency gear stuff like that of course a knife um fire stuff just kind of show you that stuff and we'll wrap this up okay so here's uh kind of a bunch of other little stuff i brought i brought this enrit little folding pack towel i didn't even use it as you can see didn't need it um the uh as far as knives go i brought my small swiss army little one that goes with me everywhere a little yellow one here right and then uh, the only other cutting tool i brought was this mora knife uh garberg and this is the carbon version right and it came in really handy um you know cutting some staffs for because you need a stick to cross the river in it so we cut sticks with that pretty handy there worked really great brought this little climate kush recon versatile seat pad and basically it's just a little inflatable pad you can use as a seat or whatever you blow it up it's about this long and i won't blow it up for you here i think i've done a review on this one if not maybe i will later but it's a uh, it came in really handy because everything was wet so you know keep you keep you from getting your fanny too wet there's that uh let's see speaking of getting too wet this is this was indispensable i just really used this a lot this is what kind of did my food prep on i sat on it i did all you know put it on logs to keep your butt from getting wet this is the uh, hidden woodsman signal panel and it's kind of it's, it's waterproof on one side it's kind of got the waterproof nylon very very useful um just a, a nice little lightweight um small easy to uh manage little uh just a signal panel but it's got many many i didn't use it the signal i just used it to uh, to sit on and to, to spread out my food on on, on you know when, on the dirt and everything else so pretty cool there and he's got his little bungee cord on it so malcolm does a great job on that and i'll put a link to that of course below there's that um 
Something that I think everybody should have is a whistle. I gotta say, I wasn't really, really impressed with the jet screen whistle. It works, but it's not, it just doesn't, doesn't seem to have, I don't know, it's like it's blocked, clogged or blocked or something, so I don't know. It works, but it's not the best whistle I've ever seen, so um, there's something that I wasn't too thrilled about, but there you go. Um, let's see, I took the uh, Pickerin Insect Lotion for uh, the Sawyer kind of white, little, little tube, of, I guess a little pouch of lotion, because the bugs were really bad. Uh, as always, I have my TK4 tournament tourniquet. And then, um, what else we got here? Oh, okay. The, uh, just a little Coglin's plastic shovel. I like this better than the folding metal ones because it's lighter and just easier to use. And if you don't know what this is for, you haven't spent much time in the woods. Uh, next, just a couple things that, um, kind of out of the box here, but I, I, I took the, brought the Exotac rip spool with me because it has got uh, some fishing line on it. It's got some duct tape on it. It's got a, uh, I say it's got, it has a, a pretty good bit of duct tape there. You can see it's a roll there, a little tube, and it's got a, a, it has a repair needle in the middle that the fishing line will fit through. So just in case something broke or, you know, messed up, I wouldn't be stuck in the woods without a way to fix it. I think that's a really cool little handy deal. So there's that. Um, lighting is something that's really important, especially when you're spending time at night. Like we hiked in in the dark and set up camp the first night. So... Uh, my favorite headlamp, I think, ever, the Yuko Vapor headlamp. I used it, and I like it because it's got a rechargeable battery pack, or uh, when the I took some extra batteries because, as you can see, the rechargeable pack went, uh, I burned it up, used it up, I had to put the other batteries in. So it gives the ability to do that, which is good. Uh, so it's, it's dual fuel, so to speak. And it just, it's lightweight, it fits your head, very easy to use. I've done a video on this one. I really like this headlamp. And also... I brought with me the Enforce, um, what is this thing? Enforce TR, it's Enforce flashlight. I did a review on this not too long ago. It's got two levels, really easy to use, um, and it just worked really well, especially for that night hike when we were um, we were hiking in the first night. And then I keep this in my in my hammock with me just in case I need a bright light at night in case you know something crazy goes down. Right. So there's that. That's it for the light stuff. Um, then. Just in case, because I use my camera for um, my phone for a camera, I had a little backup battery from Anchor. This one was a gift from Banquest, but it's a little, just a little power, little power bank. Finally, fire, and I had several ways to make a fire because you know I have to do that, right? So, way number one, as always, my big lighter. I had this one of my favorite fire starters ever, or emergency fire kits. This is a little live fire. I like it because it's very lightweight and just uh, compact. There's so many other choices though. Then I had the uh, Exotac match case with the Stormproof matches in it, the Yuko Stormproof matches, because they work great. <laughs> and then finally, the Leatherman Signal, which I've done a review on. I brought this one because I think it's best for outdoors. It has a, uh, a little ferro rod striker there, and then it's got uh, it's got everything I do need and stuff, I, not, not a lot that I don't need. It's got a great little saw and a knife that you can just open like so. Anyway, great, my, probably my favorite multi-tool for camping. I had the uh, Exotac Nano Strike here, which has a little a little compartment here. It's got some fire starters in there, and then it's just a little spark wheel that you can spark, and it'll catch those things on fire. So that's pretty cool. Fits right in the pocket here on the side of the signal. The other side, I had a backup whistle from from Tops, my old Tops whistle, which is pretty cool. They give you those if you buy a Tops knife. So that's about it, except for my Glock 43 and extra magazine in the hog holsters extra magazine carriers i like these with the ultra clip because they clipped into the pocket in my backpack and didn't didn't bang around and you know, just kept them from being loose and kept them kind of out of the way so there we go okay so that's that's pretty much everything i took what i thought i'd do is just wind this video up if, as if you haven't had enough with a uh, this little montage of clips from the backpacking trip with a little song I wrote which I felt was really appropriate as background music. I'll go ahead and sign off before I do that, so I hope you enjoy it. Again, there'll be links to all the stuff below. As always, thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. Thanks for shopping with the sponsors. I really appreciate your support. Once again, my name's Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. So let's go on a hike. I'm standing here on a mountaintop, my heart is singing and it just won't stop. Everything inside is telling me that I'm right where I belong. I can hear the sound of a gentle breeze blowing softly through the trees. 
whispering a melody to my favorite song. There's music in these mountains, it's there for all to hear. From the rumble of the thunder to the river wild and clear. From the waterfalls all crashing down just like a symphony. There's nothing else quite like the sound of the mountain melody. Well, I'm lying here by an icy stream, the mist around me like a dream. Through the trees I see the gleam of the bright moonlit sky. And the water bubbling cold and clear, soft and peaceful in my ear. As I drift off just lying here. There's music in these mountains, it's there for all to hear. From the rumble of the thunder to the river wild and clear. From the waterfalls all crashing down just like a symphony. There's nothing else quite like the sound of the mountain. like the steady pound of the waves upon the beach Others like the big brass sound of the busy city streets There's always been one special song that gives my heart a thrill I just can't help but sing along to the music of the hills Cause there's music in these mountains It's there for all to hear From the rumble of the thunder to River wild and clear. From the waterfalls all crashing down just like a symphony. There's nothing else quite like.